everyone together. Uh, but if, if you, you fall in, in one, the then the that's the your the new home. This is Star Talk. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Today, it's going to be Cosmic Queries Grab Bag. Chuck. Hey. You the grab bag man. Uh, no, I'm I'm just part of the bag. <laughs> You're just, I'm, <laughs> I'm not really much of the grab. <laughs> the gra- I'm part of the bag. And we got Gary O'Reilly joining us here. Yeah. And apparently, mm. in previous grab bags, I was insufficient to serve the needs Ooh. of the questions. Oh, you got that email. <laughs> yeah. so, so y'all went out and got one of my colleagues. Well, of course. <laughs> oh. It's all about sharing and care. Oh, sharing and care. So, Charles Liu, a returning champion. Yeah. Reti- hey, and still champion. <laughs> Charles Liu, friend and colleague. Uh-huh. And we go back. A now, long way. Almost 30 years now. What a pleasure. Wow. Yeah. It's so, been so fun. Thanks for all you bring to Star Talk. Oh, always happy to be here. Happy to see you. And you're guys. still our geek in chief. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so and, and you are the evidence that the geek spectrum is infinite in all directions. Because however geeky I am, one need not be impressed by that when they see the geekier person <laughs> than me. Okay. So I would not presume. <laughs> But thank you so much. It's very kind. I'm All really right. happy to be here. So you guys got the questions from our Patreon? Uh, our Patreon. We Go on. You want to jump oh, in? Here we go. This is Laz. And Laz says, hey, Neil and Chuck. He's talking about you, Chuck. Oh, thanks, Chuck. Uh, and he says, this is Justin from Houston, Texas. I was wondering. Wait, the I other... thought it was Laz. Well, he, he goes by Laz. Laz is his handle. Yeah, Just because his handle doesn't have to be your name, right. dude. Get with the century. Okay. <laughs> go. We're having another nerd fight. No, no. Press, <laughs> press X to death. Well, well, that was rather aggressive. <laughs> yeah, it was a little aggressive. That was okay, a little aggressive. We go. It's all right. Uh, he says, I was wondering the other week if gravity affects the flow of time in black holes or concentrated gravity. Would the age of the universe be different based on the size of your nearest black hole? Side question. If I were to make a theoretical cloak of black holes around my body, would time cease to exist for me, or would it change the rate of time inside the cloak at all? Wow. Yeah. Cloak, so he's, he's, he's feeling he's, Harry he's, Potter he's, there. He really is. Nice. He the invisibility a, cloak of <laughs> Harry Potter. But it's a time cloak. It's a time cloak, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, yes. The To answer the cloak question first, yeah. you can't make a cloak of theoretical black holes because you create basically one big black hole as a result. Right. You need stuff on the inside. Time could stand still, uh, but you've created essentially an event horizon around the right. interior of this cloak. Uh, so um, time could stand still for you if you were keeping time still at that point. But- so could you, could you make like a Lagrange point of black holes? Sure. Where all the black holes are in a stable little, you know, um, environment, yes. and each event horizon is touching just enough where it doesn't tug, and then you're just perfectly perched right in that middle of that. That is not. Listen to him talking about Lagrange points. It's great. It's Listen wonderful. to him. No, this is all a right. very serious and valuable looky, question. In fact, um, uh, and <laughs> I a, learned it from watching you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was from that uh, from the drug commercial drug back commercial. in the day. Parents, like, yeah. you're doing drugs. Parents, where'd you from, learn this? And yeah. he says to his dad, "I, I learned, learned it from, from watching you, all right? you okay?" Yeah. <laughs> Parents who do drugs have kids, have kids who, who do drugs. drugs. Did you guys grow up together? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember any of these commercials. Okay. You cannot put black holes just so they barely touch by event horizon and keep them stable. They, the quantum mechanical effects, gravitational radiation will inevitably cause them to crash into one another because okay. they're not that way. However, uh, Bowdoin Pachinsky, who is an astronomer from a long, long time ago, or maybe Andrei Paholchik, one of those two guys, uh, maybe decades ago, suggested that the centers of galaxies might contain configurations of black holes that were indeed kind of buzzing around a common center of gravity like bees swarming around. Now, the problem in the end is going to be the gravitational radiation that comes from that. They will eventually collapse. If they're that close, they just can't stay in a stable configuration 
purely gravitationally. They need something else to keep them apart. Otherwise, they coalesce, they release gravitational waves. We see it at LIGO, and we can right. find out. What yeah, but doing. we don't have to be that exotic. Just put them on a planet orbiting very close to the black hole, as we saw in the film Interstellar. Interstellar. If you're really close to a black hole, your time ticks way more slowly than everybody else. So is that all you need right. to solve his, his, his question? His yeah. question? Well, is, yeah. If you get close to the black hole, time for you runs more slowly. But the rest well, of the well, universe. We see your time runs slowly. That's right. No, time for you runs normal. Normal. Yeah. For mm -hmm. me, what I felt like was a second or two. Right? Right. It doesn't change anything. But you guys see me, right, having only been one second, while well, you guys experience decades of, of life or something right. like that. So uh, that particular question is hard to answer specifically that way. But the answer is, like you said, we solve the problem. In fact, the New York Times science journalist from the 60s and 70s, Walter Sullivan, wrote a book called Frozen Star okay. back in the early days of black holes, okay. where if you see someone about to fall in, they're basically frozen relative to you. Right. You'll just see them mm -hmm. just... Sort of pause. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that was used in, that's been used in a number of places. There's mm -hmm. a TV show called Andromeda starring Kevin Sorbo, yes. uh, where he in fact was in the ship and was caught almost falling in. And during that moment where he was kind of caught, he didn't age at all, uh, but other people did. And 300 years later, using more advanced technology, someone salvages his ship. And so now he's like fish out of water. Guy, yeah, he's you know 300 years older than everybody else. And, somehow he still can save the universe. So the first part of his question, which was, uh, if gravity affects the flow of time, are black holes concentrated gravity? Mm -hmm. so, right. so is a black hole, is the gravitational effects of a black hole the result of the black hole, its density, or is, is it actually gravity itself concentrated? Right. Gravity, Neil, uh, tell me if I'm explaining this okay, is essentially the curvature of space-time caused by mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mass and energy. So, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and mass and energy. So if a black hole is sitting there, we don't necessarily think of it as a concentrated point of gravity, but rather as a an object that happens to warp space and time so significantly that it has an event horizon around it. So... To answer that question, I think, is to express it. Yeah, I don't know if it's semantic at that level. Yeah. Because Newton was, there's an object and there's a gravitational field. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Einstein is, there's an object and space-time is warped in the presence of that object. And everything you do and how you move is influenced by right. this curvature of space-time. And you measure that curvature to be gravity. Yeah, right. So that's... That, it turns out that might sound semantic, but that Einsteinian description is way more accurate in predicting phenomenon in the right. universe. Right. And and so, but to to quibble over what happens to the time. Right. Yes, time slows down for you. After that, I don't know what more interesting there is That's to right. talk about. And, and there's a, of course, one of the most important parts of the general theory of relativity is the equivalence principle, which means that at some point you can't tell the difference between the curvature of space-time causing you to move differently and some sort of acceleration that's causing you to move differently. So uh, as far as the time changing and differing, I think Neil has the right idea on this. Charles, aren't all parts of the general theory of relativity important? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but some parts are more important than others. <laughs> as is life. <laughs> cool. All right. Wow, Who's next cool. up? All right. Um... Bill Bailey. Hi, Bill. Says, uh, Guardians of the Galactic Groove. That'll be you three. Okay. Um, <laughs> you two. You two, Gary. I'm an innocent bystander. Say I fall into a black hole, I cross the event horizon if, and we're back to Kevin Sorbo, if mm. there really was a singularity in my future, not a point in space, would it take me till the end of time to reach it? Are you of the opinion oh. that black holes are really places as opposed to objects? Bill Bailey hails from Ohio. So here we go. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Are black holes places or objects? Black mm. holes are definitely objects. They can move through space and time. Right. They, 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 that they can collide. So they clearly, they are, yeah. so they yeah. are objects. Clearly, right? they're, uh, yeah. But the singularity that Bill is describing would be a place, possibly a place inside the black hole, you see. Because singularities 
might not even have to exist. As long as something is inside an event horizon, we actually don't know how the material is structured inside it. So when you're falling, Bill, you actually are falling in toward the event horizon. You don't know if there's a singularity there. And in fact, it would take you a huge amount of time, possibly an infinite amount of time, to fall into the black hole as you, because what happens is that the black hole's event horizon grows to meet you. And as you look in toward the event horizon, the things closer to the event horizon to you, you see their time going more slowly. But if you look backwards, then the time is going more fast or quickly in the other direction. So at the moment you are reaching the black hole's event horizon, you see the entire history of the entire universe of that location simultaneously. Entire future history of the universe behind you mm -hmm. right. unfolding, right? Because yep. you've slowed and down. The entire and past. Right. In and front the entire of you. Because past time has right. basically stopped for you. Yeah. That's yeah. so I'm crazy! <laughs> <laughs> it's insane! Chuck, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. Well, it 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 succeeded. <laughs> it certainly succeeded. In, in, that is insane. Yeah. In in these yeah. big, huge concepts that we're talking about here, about quantum versus general relativity versus space and time, it sometimes can be helpful to think of time as always existing past, present, and future, and you're just filling in that dimension as you happen to pass through it. Mm -hmm. We are prisoners of the present, forever transitioning between our inaccessible past and our unknowable future. Oh, that's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> according, according to Captain Cook. Mm. <laughs> Prisoner sounds so depressing. It makes me feel like I'm Patrick McGowan or number oh, six gosh, or something. Yes. Well, we're, oh, we're, 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 no, wait, don't put emotion in what no, I just no, said. No. It just is. Maybe we're not prisoners. Maybe we're privileged participants in the present. Oh, that sounds oh. like a creepy prisoner to me. <laughs> 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 don't worry. One day you'll be able to leave the basement. <laughs> <laughs> but not now. Not now. <laughs> not today. <laughs> I mean, what do we say to the gods of By prison? the way, that... Me uttering that line mm -hmm. was lifted by Beyonce for her international tour between songs. Are you serious? Oh, I'm serious. All right. So who is who is the uh, author of that particular quote? Oh, That's him, man. It, it would be me. That's him. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that before. That's why I asked. Oh, oh, you didn't know? Okay. No, no, no sarcasm. Yeah, oh, well, that's no. not okay. So wait a minute. Okay, we are now I'm derailing the show. Of, but what, what? I gotta derail the show. I'm sorry. Because somebody mentioned Beyonce. Yes, you exactly. You can't, you can't keep are you kidding me? Stay focused. Come on. We can't stay. <laughs> come on. You mentioned Beyonce. I mean, it's a law. Whenever somebody mentions Beyonce, <laughs> the all things must stop. And we gotta talk about Beyonce <laughs> now. Beyonce okay. did do one of the greatest videos of all time. Which was? Of all time. Of all time. Oh, that's right. I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let, let you finish. finish. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Finish. Please. Uh, what, 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 what? what did Beyonce, be, how did Beyonce get this what? quote to- I'm on the internet somewhere saying it. And well, her people or she saw it, said, that's cool. No, I, but what I'm saying is, did they use your voice? Yes. Okay, that's All different. Right. Did she violate okay. your copy? So here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking it's just like, you know, got me looking so crazy right now. Thank you. We are all prisoners. <laughs> uh, like, that's how I thought it went down. Yeah. But it's you. It's actually you It's saying, my voice. Okay. We're all that's cool. just prisoners here. <laughs> yeah. Of our it was my own voice. Yes. Okay. That, I, I uh, thought it wasn't for the domain, it was for the international okay. tour. Okay. Yeah. But I thought she was quoting you, but really, no, no. they were using you they as a part of the me. actual that's correct. concert. Yeah. All right. That's still cool. That's really that's cool. Insane. That's, you know, okay. we get back on the road. I mean, oh, and people <laughs> ask me, well, how much did they pay you? Mm -hmm. So I told them how much, and they say, Dude, you should have gotten Beyonce tickets. It would have worked much more. <laughs> it was like, no, but I'm not. I, I, now we got to get you in a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> Hello, Stark Talkiverse. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your host of the Stark Talk podcast. I'm here to announce that we just opened a brand new channel on YouTube called Stark Talk Plus. And that's where we're going to bring all kinds of innovative content that doesn't quite fit on our flagship channel, but they will involve experiments in what we create, what your reaction might be to what we create, and it's gonna be our skunk works. 
as it were, to borrow a term from aerospace. So I look forward to sharing all of this new content with you and check it out if you have a chance. All right, who's next? You want to go? Or I'll go. No, I'll you go. All right. Do I think all it's about black holes? These are all then, about black holes in the beginning. Well, I yeah. should have said that at the, up the t at the top. Oh, no, not everything's about Okay, okay, go. All right, so go. this one's from Matthew. Again, these are all Patreon patrons that are contributing these questions, so thank you very much. I, Neil, Charles, and Chuck. Matthew from Dallas. That'll be in Texas. Um, is there a way to transfer Wait, information? Instead of Dallas, Norway, yes. Yeah, no, but it just it actually says Dallas TX, so I'm just okay. just in case it's like a Paris, Texas, as this opposed is, to Paris, France. This is America, dude. We know where Dallas is. Do we? <laughs> We're so happy for you. <laughs> well, it's just south of Amarillo, right? <laughs> oh, here we go. You're back on it. Is there a way to transfer information? It's giggling. Is there a way to transfer information with quantum entanglement? If so, can we instantaneous communication anywhere in the universe, no subspace required? We kind of already answered that one. Yeah. No, but yeah. Give, give us a clean answer here. Quantum entanglement is pretty awesome. Without subspace. Yeah. Oh. At the moment, quantum entanglement could provide instantaneous information transfer, but we haven't been able to confirm it. There's no way yet for us to be able to conduct an experiment that can show that quantum entangled particles could travel, transfer information faster than light. There's nothing mathematical that says that it can't, but there's nothing physical that says that it can. Okay, so he says no subspace required. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is subspace? Oh. Is there a subspace? Sp subspace. Are you really asking that? I'm saying. Sure. Like, and you've been my, you, you, you're asking that? I think Chuck's asking it on behalf of our I audience. Am I am Thank asking you. on behalf. Let's not be harsh on Chuck. I'm just subspace saying that. is an important question. Okay, so yeah. subspace, Chuck. Subspace Charles. was invented by Star Trek writers. Yes. Because it needed to find a way to move things faster than light from one point to another in our universe. And so... Not just things, but communication. Right. Yes, subspace yes, communications are even more amazing than, than actual traveling through subspace. But what you do is your warp nacelles create a warp bubble around you, which puts you out of our universe and into subspace, which then allows you to squirt forward like a little uh, bubble through space-time at faster than light. So warp 10 is an infinite speed, and you get it's a logarithmic scale, warp 9... And that warm 9.9 .9 and warp 9.99 .9 and so on and so on. Just get you faster and faster and faster. That's where the faster engines really can't time. take it. That's right. The, <laughs> She's the, breaking up, Captain. Well, <laughs> She's breaking up. The she can't take it, Captain. I can't do anymore. The USS <laughs> Voyager. <laughs> okay, well, so did he. <laughs> yeah, Scotty and Shrek yeah, were Scotty the same. Yeah, Scotty and Shrek were the yeah. same. <laughs> you know, the, the Star Trek Enterprise D could go around could go around warp 9.4 at a sustained period of time. But Star Trek Voyager had 17 decks and had a nominal cruising speed of warp 9.975. Nice. So it was a speedy little ship. Okay, so subspace allows, because with, with regard to communication, mm -hmm. if they're just having banter with, with, you know, home base, what, what the United Star base, Star Starfleet, so, yeah, Starfleet San Command, Francisco, Starfleet Command. Uh -huh. If they're just having conversation back and forth, that's not really possible, right? If it's moving at the speed of light, that's right. It so, all be, those conversations in Star Trek or through really any space show had to be going through some medium other than regular space, right? We're nowhere near that right now, are we? Not uh, anywhere, <laughs> absolutely nowhere. Okay, it'd be Next nice. Question. It would all right, this is Wendy Sue, and Wendy says, Hi, Dr. Tyson, Dr. Lou, Mr. Nice, the glue that holds everything together. In sh I'm from Shanghai, China. Uh, if gravity is the curvature of space-time, say if two celestial objects were to stay completely still relative to each other, they would feel zero effect from each other's gravity because they are not moving through the fabrics. Thanks for bringing back the joys of learning. Okay, uh, I I don't think uh, I don't, I missed the question. <laughs> no, if I, gravity is the curvature of space time, yes. Say if two celestial objects were to stay completely relative to each other, uh, they would feel zero effect from each other's gravity. Right. They okay. would. They, they would. I, right. I, I, I guess the question is: that Is that the case? Right. Is this the case? It turns out that no, they would still feel the effects. You see, because gravity. Say you have object A. It has a gravitational field that distorts space-time around it. Object B is over here. It distorts space-time around it. 
even if they're still with one another, they still feel the distortions. The distortions do not change with time if they're exactly far apart, but they still feel each other. So they may not accelerate toward each other, but they feel that force. They should accelerate toward each other if no other forces or accelerations are present. That would have to be the case if the two of them are staying absolutely still with respect to one another. Okay, the only way that they would not feel each other's gravity is if they didn't have any gravity at all. Mm. I, will, I will quote John Archibald Wheeler. Mass tells space how to curve. Space tells mass how to move. Ooh. Okay, so in this case, we have two objects that have curved space-time in their vicinity. Those, that's all the instructions they need to fall towards one another, another. or towards each other. Right. That's right. Uh, and because they're following the path that they can't help following. Right. So if they're perfectly still with respect to one another, they are experiencing something else that's keeping them perfectly still with respect to one another. Uh -huh. Otherwise, they would, would be accelerating they, toward they, one another. They would move towards each other. I have an addendum to this, if I may. Please. One of the most realistic scenarios to deflect an asteroid mm -hmm. that might be headed our way mm -hmm. is to take a spaceship, park it near the asteroid in perfect path <laughs> with it. So I tell park it, it's a moving asteroid. It's a moving asteroid, so, so it's just moving okay. alongside so of it. So you park it, so it moves alongside of it. Mm. And they want to move towards each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have little retro rockets on your spacecraft that prevent that. So every time it tries to move towards, okay. the retro rockets fire. Fire. And it's just like, I'm, I'm just going to move over here. Over here. But and I it's like, where you, you going, got, baby? <laughs> so, so, so the, so, <laughs> so, so the, the meteor, the asteroid, mm -hmm. the comet ends up getting pulled towards the spaceship through the gravitational field. Right. So in a way, it's like a gravitational tractor beam. Right. Don't stand so close to me. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Ah. So you don't need much of a deflection. You don't need a degree If you get it early so enough, yeah. tiny deflection is all yeah. you need. Right. Oh, yeah. So oh, and that also has the benefit that some asteroids, comets, we think they're not very tightly held together. Some might be just piles of rubble mm -hmm. moving as, as in unison. Whereas if you just have a, if you just go in and bust it up, who knows what that's going to look like? But gravitationally, that'll affect all the particles together, and so you good. Oh, okay. Yeah, two in one. All right. This question, next question is uh, Javier Ortega. Hi, uh, I'm ha an have Javier. Oh, Javier. 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 Javier okay. Ortega. I'm an engineer from Panama. Here goes Panama. my Panama. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Very nice. The spirit moved me. Okay, the question is, the light of the stars travels away from it in an infinitely dense sphere of photons. Will every unobstructed object in the distance receive its photons? How can this be if in the far distance the rays will spread apart from the star? I know we can be talking about quantum waves instead of photons, but even in that case... I can't figure how this light can maintain its density wow. through the distance and size. Greetings from the past. Love that's your show. Good. You're welcome. I, I Thank you. I think I understand yeah, the question. That's a in really the sense, good question. Imagine a star, Charles. right? Mm -hmm. And the rays come in every direction. Right. Do those rays start spreading farther, farther and farther, farther apart, apart mm -hmm. so that they'll not intersect some stars, whereas they will intersect others, right? Yeah, does every single sight line onto a star from every single distance? receive light right. and how could the star be giving off that much light right that's a great question that's yeah. a great question but how could it not i mean that seriously i mean right. the, because no matter where you are and whatever vantage point you okay. would see light yeah, here's what i want to mm. Charles, oh i'm sorry to check me out on this okay okay, okay. i'm thinking just in real time because mm. i didn't have sure. the answer ready made for this no no well here's what i want the whole idea of this here's what i wonder as your distance gets greater and greater from the star, mm -hmm. the energy density of the light diminishes. Correct. Yep. Mm. Okay. So the intensity drops and drops and drops yes. and drops. And so there will be a point where it's below your ability to detect it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's this point in practice that's right. for what it is you're talking about. In practice, mm. there is a detection threshold. And therefore, for any that, detector, for any detector, yes. so that mm. light is the case. Any but real world. In mathematical reality, you actually can, in fact, 
eventually receive light from every single object in mm -hmm. the universe. This is the basis of Olber's paradox. Why is the sky dark at night? If there are enough stars out there, every line of sight should get some light from it somehow, and you eventually wind up filling the entire night sky with stars or starlight one way or another, no matter what. So why is the star? Why is the sky ever dark, right? And part of the answer, one way to think of the answer is that light travels at a finite speed. And therefore, not every spot actually has a light source where the light has had time to reach your eye yet, right? Another point has so a to place, do with- So an object can be so far away, mm. in the time it has turned on, it's light there's not enough time, time in the universe to reach, universe to reach, to reach right. yeah, that's, that's right. one it's like one of three ways yeah out there are of, different ways out of this thing right? but that's Obers that's a one, one way that you can think about it right in other ways this detection limit your eyes can't see them even though it's there right right now one of the famous things that we do in a science is to try to find cosmic background radiations mm -hmm. right microwave mm -hmm. radiation is yep. famous from the big bang but also there's cosmic infrared radiation background there's cosmic visible light background like exactly how much is it spaces that we looked years ago that were completely blank, had nothing in there. We stare at it with the Hubble Space Telescope or JWST and thousands of galaxies appear. It's all a matter of detection. So hopefully that answers the question there. And if we're talking about like the light from the Big Bang, where the entire universe is being filled with all of this light that existed at the moment that the universe began, what's going on there is that the entire spectrum of that background light is being stretched as space is expanding. Mm -hmm. So that's why that light, which used to be gamma rays, is now microwaves. And so you can A fill the space. A much lower branch of uh, energy branch of right. the spectrum. Yeah. So you can fill yeah. the space with the same amount of energy, just each spot in space has much less of it. Wow. So there you go. Deep, yeah. significant yeah. question. Yeah. 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 Wow. Some great questions. Yeah. People have been on man. point today, We, we have had a- On point. Have you ever wanted one of your questions on the universe? answered we all have questions about the universe from black holes to quasars quantum entanglement wormholes there is no end to the depths of cosmic curiosity well the entry level of patreon membership with star talk gets you just that i think it starts at five dollars a month you have access to the question line that reaches our cosmic query programming and not only that, we produce a special Cosmic Queries installment just for Patreon members. So if you weren't the director of the Hayden Planetarium, what do you think you would be doing? Okay, it, but this had to be another universe. It wouldn't right. happen in this universe. Okay. Uh, I'd be, I'd be a, a, a songwriter for Broadway musicals. Ooh! So that's the entry level and the perks ascend from there. Uh, there's a level, in fact, where we send you uh, an autographed copy of one of my latest books. Uh, right now, it's Starry Messenger, Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization. And it's signed with my fancy fountain pen with purple ink. So uh, I invite you to just check the link below. And all of that money goes to our ability to experiment with new ways of bringing the universe down to Earth. So thank you for those who have already joined. And we welcome others to participate in this grand adventure of what it is to bring the universe down to earth. As always, keep looking up. Guys, we've got only like five minutes left. Okay. So, oh, man. So, Charles, you and I have to like tighten our game here. Okay. You pulled out your stopwatch. What's up? Uh, so I figure if we got to get through these quickly, then we'll just do uh, a time limit on each question. Okay. And then you guys have to determine whether or not <laughs> you can answer it in that. Wow. Okay. So How what do we say? 30 seconds? I think that's a good round number. All right. All right. 30. That's a that's sound that's, bite. That's a long the time. Make news it finds 10. you on the street. Make it 10. 10 seconds? Ten no, seconds. that's that's too short. You're the Usain Bolt of science. You don't have to use the whole 30 seconds. I'm just saying that the, yeah, mo yeah. the most of if it you can, can do be, it in 10, do it in 10. If you can do it in 10, do it in 10. But 30 Ooh. seconds, time right. is up. Let's All go. Right. Okay. okay. All so right. how about we okay. do it? I don't want to take All five right. minutes explaining why we're only going to take <laughs> exactly. 10 seconds. All right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. go. This is Jamie Wilson. Greetings, Dr. Tyson and honored guest Charles Liu. If you could time travel to any point in human scientific history, which time period would you choose and why? Jasmine from Santa Rosa, California. Go. Whoa. Trinity. First nuclear explosion. 
I would time travel back to the collision of Thea and Earth, which made the moon. Ooh. I want to see that in the in the night sky. Dang. I would time travel forward to a place where black people are doing okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So Thea would be now four and a half billion years ago. Right. And Trinity would now be 70 years ago, 80 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next question. Frederick Deschamps. Hi, all. This is Fred from UP, Michigan. And I would like to know if you, Charles, have read the Discworld books. Ah, uh, yes. By Terry Pratchett. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. What kind of fun physics can you think of taking place on a magical land <laughs> such as? Terry it? tells all kinds of cute physics jokes because this world is literally a disc, but it sits on elephants and then there's a turtle that the elephants are standing on and it just kind of swims through the universe. So it's a. It's, so it's not turtles all the way down. Right. It's just turtles one layer deep. Yes. Okay. So it's almost like a giant disc shaped spaceship that's going through the Flutter. universe. That's what it yes. is. And, and Tur it. Tur okay. Yeah. Are, are you guys feeling any flat earth trauma flat going earth. on here? It this is. is yeah. This it's is rough. Yeah. Disguised. But, as... but Terry was one of those folks that always told what good jokes up? about <laughs> science. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I stole five of his seconds. It's Go. all good. It's all good. Okay. Now, his humorous physics Easter eggs were good enough for me. I have yet to speculate, aside from uh, this very good point, that you're basically seeing new constellations all the time. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right. Chuck some ahead. monitoring yeah, time. Uh, this question's from Logical Hillbilly um, from wonderful West Virginia. I have a question about white holes. Here we go. Uh -oh. Although right. Einstein's equations show that mathematically they can exist, nothing has been found that fits the description. Right. Is it possible that there was only one white hole and it was as what we know as the Big Bang? Thank you for all the awesome information. Alas, no. Charles. The white hole idea and what we have seen about the Big Bang are not compatible. Wow, that only took nine <laughs> seconds. I told World you. record. I told you. I told you. <laughs> I told you. Wait, let me, let me, uh, will you yield 10 seconds to me? I yield 20 seconds. Yeah, because. Yield you. 10 seconds to the gentleman from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so when white holes were first put forth, uh -huh. we deeply wanted quasars to be white holes at the edge of the universe. So there was a very high concentration of energy coming out of them. And when you compared what you'd predict for a white hole, with every known object in the universe, nothing matched. So the white hole remains mathematical speculation, unfortunately, because it'd be a really cool pairing with the universe's black holes. Yeah. Right. All okay. Right. Okay, hit. You ready? Set up. This that wasn't 20 seconds, so yeah. we, 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 we made it under 30 seconds. Okay. Chase Matthews writing from Ventura, California. Do we have the capability of creating a Dyson Swarm with technology available today, or maybe a similar structure in low Earth orbit. Dyson Swarm, explain, please. It's a bunch of vacuums that you put the Dyson Swarm. <laughs> I set them up, you knock them down. <laughs> I, I don't know what a Dyson Swarm is. I just know what a Dyson Sphere is. Yeah, imagine just a whole bunch of satellites that kind of surround oh, Okay, thing. all right, so it's not a full solid structure. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, a Dyson Sphere swarm around mm. Earth would be pointless. The only point of a Dyson sphere is to trap energy, energy. coming from the thing in the center of the sphere. So right. you would put it around the sun. You mm -hmm. would put it around the galaxy. You would put it around a galaxy cluster or a cluster of stars. So time's up. And and my nine second oh, it's version. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and my nine second version is that you can create a constellation like that around the Earth. In fact, some people might be trying to do that, like say Starlink or something. But it wouldn't get energy. Yeah. There it's you not. go. Mm -hmm. You guys did it. I mean, thank you. All right. Hey. Next question is from Sam Green. I've read that aerogels are heat resistant to extreme temperatures, in yeah. some cases, 1300 degrees Celsius. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But are very fragile. Are there any applications or apparatus that could be developed to harness this property to explore the inner earth or use in nuclear reactors? Oh, look at that. Oh. Well, one application I just learned mm -hmm. in the Paris Fashion Week, uh -huh. uh, there is a handbag made out of aerogel as a new fashion addition. Mm. <laughs> do you have one? No, I don't. Okay. But I do have my own aerogel on a shelf. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but what it means is new materials have always influenced the creativity of artists. Yeah. And uh, right up and down, whenever something new happens, 
creative artists say, hey, I, that's a new material with these properties. I'm going to do the X, Y, Z with it. Right. So, uh, yeah. but in terms of probing Earth, Charles, I don't know how. What- Aerogels have been used in spacecraft. You basically encase them in something. And then that forms a very interesting and useful thermal barrier between something you want to stay hot and something you want to stay cold. So you could do that down into the Earth. Problem is with the Earth going going oh, into to, the Earth in the order to pressure, visit yeah in Earth. Yes. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. The pressure is too strong; it will crush the aerogel. aerogel. Right, and then in a nuclear situation, the radiation will alter the structure of the aerogel, unfortunately, over time, and therefore render it not as effective. So that, that's a good wow. point. I hadn't that's thought of that. that. So the the its thermal its thermal properties would be different. There's energy from a thousand degrees Celsius, of course. But targeted particle energy from nuclear reactions mm-hmm. would have completely enough energy to break apart all those molecules. So you'd have a pile of dust at the end. Wow. Sadly. By my read. Yes. Yeah. And no handbag. And no handbag. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. All right. Last question. Okay. Time all right. Flies when you're I, Charles and fun. I have been doing okay. With I, I got to tell you, with, you, you guys have really the yielding been, of the time. You've, been, you've been, been knocking it out pretty okay. cool. The yeah. last Thank one. You. Um, you you both did about I mean well Charles was thirty point seven seconds and you were thirty three seconds okay which for you was like wow. three and a half seconds yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there was a child's coloring book you just went over the edges just, yeah okay yeah. yeah yeah I know those that's who a good stays way to do in it. the lines come on yeah. anyway right Gabe Malik I'm a high school student from Washington D.C. Um, I'm writing what is the most agreed upon geometrical nature of the universe Euclidean or non Euclidean or is it spherical oh. Okay. It's Euclidean. Flat. Absolutely. Yeah, flat universe. It has been confirmed as a consensus almost completely by everyone. Yeah, no one is denying this. And we get that from the dark energy, which flattens out what would otherwise be a spherical shape or a saddle shape. The dark well, energy flattens that out. That is still a mathematical hypothesis. What is? We have measured the universe to be Euclidean and perfectly flat. And then we think that it is the dark energy that causes it to stay flat, like inflates it just enough. But we don't really know that. For what do you sure think yet. is making it flat? We don't know, but that is don't one tell me hypothesis. What I, did, I told you was making you, it flat. You have to confirm that there has not yet been an experiment. Is there something else that. out there that you think could be making it flat? Possibly. Like what? Something called quintessence, which is not exactly dark energy. There's Sounds also, like a fragrance. It does. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually, I think, what people have in mind. Qu- Quintessence. Quintessence. <laughs> but the idea is that the, Sorry, the geometry is totally okay. I like it. Oh, yeah. Quintessence. Yeah, it's by Cody. Flat. Yeah. Measured flat. Mm-hmm. And we good. Okay. So why? There you go, Gabe. We have more left to figure out. There you go. There you go. You're a young person, still in high school, so say probably time on your side to work it out. Yeah, let, the, let him work it. You figure it out. Right, right. That's right. All on you now, Gabe. <laughs> Charles Lou, delighted to have you back. It is always And we're all here in person, too. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. a joy. Yeah. We can, we can, we can like, teach each other. It's so weird. Oh, yeah. so great. Fist bumps and handshakes all around. Way Fist bump go, in the middle here. Science powers, science powers, activate. Oh, that's like Power Rangers. They all get together and uh, the Musketeers, all for one and one for all. Oh, and the mm-hmm. swords are rooted in that. His the Musketeers or the Musketeers? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Musketeers came <laughs> later. Wiggle your ears. I swear he said Musketeer. I probably oh, that would be did. Great. All right, this has been another installment of Star Talk Cosmic Queries Grab Bag Edition, leaning black hole, I must say, and cosmology, but that that made it that much sweeter. Black holes don't suck. Right, black holes don't suck. Earth. <laughs> How long have you waited to say that? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but if you fall in one, then that's your new home. Ah. In fact, this was composed by Harry Belafonte. Black holes don't suck. But if you fall in one, then that's your new home. No, they don't suck. They don't suck. They don't suck. They don't suck. No, they don't. Everyone together. Uh, But if if you you fall fall in in one, then that's your new home. I'm so glad he's dead right now. (laughs) So he did not have to hear that. (laughs) It is time. (laughs) 
Chuck, Gary, Charles, always oh, good to have uh, you. in the That's same room with you guys. Oh, dear. Neil deGrasse Tyson here for Star Talk. You say that. <laughs> Dale! <laughs> <laughs> Keep looking up. Uh, Do a clean outro, please. Oh, that was Aww. clean.